Today on Home Built Workshop, we're building my acoustic guitar side bender. So stick around. How's it going everyone? Welcome to another episode of Home Built Workshop. Well, it is time to get started on the next acoustic guitar build. Well, sort of. In order to build the next acoustic guitar, I need to build a bender to bend the sides. That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna build an acoustic guitar side bender. I've already completed sort of a first step by drawing up a few of these parts in Fusion 360. We're gonna begin this project by firing up the CNC machine and cutting out the side profile. I'm using that kind of as my base and what I'm going to use to build all of the other components from. I haven't modeled every single piece of this project mainly because I'm not 100% sure how I really want this to come together. So I'm just gonna start off by cutting out the sides and then we'll go from there. The edges of these parts are pretty clean right off the CNC, but this is a veneered plywood, so the veneer does have a little bit of splintering. That's nothing we can't fix with just a little bit of hand sanding. Well, here's our two side pieces. Now we can start building the rest of this jig off of these. I think the next piece that I wanna focus on is some sort of a base that'll help hold these together something like this. Also cut out on the CNC machine, nothing fancy. This is out of a piece of three quarter inch plywood. I just have some recesses cut in here that hopefully the sides will fit into. We interrupt this guitar side bender video because, well, I need to ask you a favor. If you're enjoying this project and you're not already a subscriber to the channel, take a second, hit that subscribe button, and also turn on the notifications so that you get notified when I upload new videos. It doesn't cost anything, it's absolutely free. I don't send you spam emails or even call you about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> Your subscriptions mean a lot to me, and it's also a great way to show your support for the channel. So if you're not already subscribed, click that button now. And if you are subscribed, you're awesome. Let's get back to the build. Look at that, like a glove. With the base cut, that kind of determines the width here. The width is six inches. That's the width of my mold. And from what I've found is a kind of a standard measurement for width for the guitar molds. And that's what I'm gonna stick with. I'm gonna keep that same width all the way up. Next, I wanna focus on the platform where I'll be able to place the mold. It's also going to give me a bit of a cavity underneath here to let me mount some electronics. While it would have been possible to cut all of these parts using the CNC machine, a lot of these pieces are just regular squared off parts, so I decided to cut those on the table saw. That way seemed a lot quicker to me to just knock them out real fast rather than to draw them up and create the G-code program for the machine. This was just faster. put a couple clamps on there just to help hold everything together. I'm gonna wait to apply any glue or use any screws to hold this together till I get a little bit farther along. This way if I need to make some changes or modify a piece it's gonna be really easy to do so. The next order of business is to create the piece that's gonna connect these two uprights. Now I'm not gonna use plywood for that. I want it to be solid wood and nice and sturdy because we're gonna drill a hole down the center eventually and have a little screw clamp in there so I need it to be good and solid. I found an off cut from a slab here. It's about an inch and three quarters thick. I think we can cut a strip off of this, use that to connect our piece here. It's gonna work really well. I'll also be able to use a scrap of this a little bit later once we get to creating the adjustable arms 
that'll be on one side. Th this side, that side. I can't remember which side. <laughs> we'll get to that later. These arms are three inches wide, so that's what we'll cut that strip of hardwood down to. Now this piece does have some checking here. I'm gonna try to cut that away. I wanna to try to keep this as solid of a piece as I can. You can also see another crack here. So the section I'm gonna use is come right out of the middle. This block will connect these two uprights. Now we just need to mark out and drill a hole right down through the center. This first hole is not going all the way through. I'm going to stop just shy of the bottom. Then I'll switch out my drill bit to a little bit smaller and finish drilling the hole all the way through. This is going to leave us with a slightly stepped hole. Now, if you're wondering what press block I'm using, Here's the information. This is a Shop Fox brand press clamp. Pretty cool, pretty well priced from what I've found. It's got an Acme thread. This is the little threaded insert that we're drilling the hole for. I'll put links down below in the description if you want to check these out. This one in particular is model number D2893. Let's get this little insert installed. Now it would be nice if I could just tap this into place, but this little piece has a couple of ridges on either side I guess probably to keep it from spinning in the hole although with the screws installed I'm not sure that's going to happen I want to try to make a couple reliefs in this hole so that these little ridges have somewhere to go I suppose just jamming it in there is probably an option but I don't want to risk splitting this piece so I'm going to take a file and try to file a couple grooves in the sides Oh, that's going to work. Now I'll thread this press clamp down through this little shoe thing goes on the bottom and that is where we will attach the block that actually pushes on my mold now I need to create the block that's going to attach to this metal shoe if you remember back from the video where I made the bending mold this piece gets pressed down into the waist of the guitar and that's what this block is going to press down on. I'm going to use another piece of elm just like I used up here. These slots in the side are for some ears that I'm going to cut on the side of this block which allow it to slide up and down. I'm going to use my cross cut sled on the table saw combined with a stop block and I'll just nibble away the material until I've created I guess what we could call a tenon. Now we'll just get this out of the way for now. And we can take our new sliding piece here and hopefully, I guess we're gonna have to loosen up a few more clamps. Ah. To mount the little metal shoe, I'm gonna drill out some screw holes on the base. I'm pretty sure this is cast iron and it drills really nicely. Before I screw this in place, I think now I've got enough of this thing built that I can go ahead and start securing some of these pieces with some screws. I'm using some wood screws that have a super tiny head in hopes that it doesn't chip and break out any pieces of this plywood. I'm not going to glue this version together. These screws are going to be plenty strong, but really I want to be able to take this apart if I decide later on that I need to make any modifications. I'm just thinking and if I'm missing something, 
Once I screw this together, I won't be able to take this block out. Well, I guess I could just remove one side if I need to. I'm overthinking it. Let's screw this together. How many times do you think I'm gonna have to at least pull one side off? I'm saying at least once, maybe twice. Who knows? <laughs> Let's keep going and find out. To locate where this little metal shoe is gonna go, I've stuck some double-sided tape to the bottom and I'm gonna temporarily put it back in place. Now in theory, I should be able to slide this block up if I loosen the shoe, that's where it's going to live. Now let's see if I can drill and install those screws without having to take this apart already. Why is that so fun? Look at that. I guess technically, you could probably use this as it is. You'd have to use some clamps to kind of bend the sides around. It might be a little bit awkward, but I've seen really simple jigs like that used where you just use clamps. I wanna make this a little bit easier to use, a little more user friendly. The next assembly that I wanna work on is gonna be very similar to this center clamp press. The only difference is there's gonna be a couple movable arms that as you're bending your side, you can pull those arms down then there will be another clamp which will clamp it tight against your mold. Whether you're doing a regular style guitar or some sort of a cutaway, this will allow you to be able to get in there, clamp it down nice and solid. And voila! <laughs> Through the magic of television, we have our front clamp. This will eventually get bolted into place. It'll be adjustable. You can clamp it in and it is my understanding that this sort of clamp for the front is really intended for clamping the cutaway. So you can really get in there and using the proper call, get the cutaway portion of the sides really clamped into place. Now I wanna focus on making the clamping piece that will bend the lower bow of the guitar. I'm gonna fire up the CNC machine and make a couple more pieces that will assemble into this clamping bracket. Here's our brackets fresh off the CNC. There's a couple recesses on here where we can install a couple of one inch dowels. I've got a nice one inch maple dowel here that will cut down into sections and assemble these brackets. I've also made a smaller set of these little brackets that will be able to be used on the front if I want to bend the upper bout using brackets like this. If I'm not doing a cutaway where I would use this, I think this might just be easier using a bracket like this. Like I've done on the rest of this jig, I'm not assembling these brackets with any glue, just screws. That way I can make modifications later without having to remake the entire piece. Now we've got our two little bracket thingies. These are gonna get held in place here with some springs and some eye bolts. What note is that? <laughs> Doesn't quite fit on there quite perfect yet because we don't have the actual mold in there. But with the mold in place, you can see now how these dowels will hold everything down. And then you just carefully, it's not gonna work so good without the mold, but pull it down, clamps everything down. Now that we know where everything's gonna live, I think we can move on and add a little bit of electronics. Now, a lot of these have a temperature controller and all kinds of fancy gadgets built in. I'm not gonna do that this time around. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. I wanna have a plug that I can plug the heat blanket into. Here's my heating blanket here, and it has just a simple IEC connector. So I wanna have an IEC connector somewhere on here so that I can plug the blanket into it 
then I want that outlet to be connected to a timer that I can just turn on. The timer will act sort of as the power switch. And then I'll probably just use another IEC connector so that I can just use a standard kind of a computer type power cable to plug in and supply power for everything. Pretty simple. I'm using my cordless rotary tool kind of like I would a router to cut out the opening for these connectors. There's one. There's two. There's three. Now I'm just gonna take a few minutes, get all this wired up. I'm gonna solder all of the connections on these IEC connectors, make sure they're nice and solid. And then we'll just add some more screws, get everything buttoned up and I'll show you how this thing's going to work. Now this circuit that I'm wiring up is really fairly simple, but I want to let you know that if you're not 100% confident in circuits like this, then please seek some professional assistance. I don't want anybody to get hurt or catch something on fire. Be safe and make sure you know what you're doing. To cover this mess up, I'm using a 3D printed switch plate. Now we can install the little indicator panel for the timer. Now I'll grab a piece of sandpaper and just run around all of the edges just to remove any splinters and sharp corners. And with that, our bender is complete. Let's just run through a very brief and high level demonstration of how this thing's gonna work. First we'll load the mold into the bender. For this demonstration, let's assume that we are working with a non-cutaway model. Well, because really that's the only mold that I have at this time. When I do have a cutaway model, we'll install this. I'll make the appropriate clamping call and we'll use this to press the cutaway. Once we have the mold loaded, we take and make a little sandwich using the heating blanket, some strips of spring steel, and our side material. We'll wrap that all up in aluminum foil and we'll take this and we're gonna place it inside here. I don't wanna damage it because it's not wrapped, so we're gonna pretend that that's in there. We can take our side calls, and I've added some little spring clip things to make it easier to attach. And the same thing for our front call. We'll clip it into place. We'll take the waste block that I made earlier when I made the mold, that gets inserted into the center. We won't put any pressure on it just yet. I can plug a power cable into this IEC connector on the back, plug that into the wall. We would then be able to plug our heating blanket into this outlet. Then when we're ready to heat this up, we just turn the timer, it'll heat up, I'll monitor that with an infrared thermometer. When it gets up to temperature, then we can put pressure down on this, pressing the side down into the waste. And then from there, we'll be able to just bring this around, which will wrap the sides around the mold. Same thing on the back. bending the sides right into place. I think it's gonna work awesome. Now let's say that I was going to do a cutaway model guitar. Well, that's really easy. We just remove this. Then I would remove these eye bolts to make room for the cutaway press. Now one thing I wanna let you know when I installed these originally, I did use nuts on the inside, but I quickly found out that in order to remove these, I would have to disassemble the 
top support for this mold. So I replaced the nuts and washers with some threaded inserts. That way I can just pull these off without having to take anything apart. Then we would just install this guy using some bolts and more threaded inserts on the inside. That will allow us to swing this down into place and with the appropriate clamping call installed, crank this guy down, pressing everything in place. I cannot wait to put this thing to use. This was a super fun project for me to put together. I don't know what it was. So many different things combined into one. There's the mechanical aspect, the woodworking. We got to use the CNC springs and electrical parts. Just a really fun project to put together. Let me know down in the comments what you like about this project. What did you do different on your bender? What would you have done different this time around? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Oh, uh -huh.